One thing that we can all agree upon, Democrats, Republicans, Occupy Wall Street people, is that jobs are good and more jobs are better. So, Can I talk to you for a second? When I was first asked to speak at TEDx Wall Street, I was told that I would be the first bank chairman ever to speak at a TED conference. And Jonathan Endy, who organized the conference, told me if I don't do a good job, I could be the last. And that may not bother you, but it certainly bothered me. And then I was told that I was going to follow Jim Cramer, who I see on TV all the time. So I thought, maybe what I'll do is I'll take off my jacket and I'll roll up my sleeves. But I thought, I can't pull that off either. So I started watching TED videos. And I thought, wow, TED is hip. And I'm thinking, wow. So I thought about coming in a t-shirt and sandals. I thought about doing this sort of Tony Robbins relaxed fit jeans. And then I thought, you know what? I have something really, really important to tell you. And you might find a little bit subversive. So I have to come in my comfort zone, which is a suit and a tie. So hip or not, here is what we got. And I want you folks on the web to know I'm much hipper than the guys in that section. <laughs> OK, so jobs. Here's one thing that's surprising that people aren't talking about when it comes to jobs. And that is, by dramatically changing the structure of the banking industry, we can create more jobs in America. And by the way, that's true in other countries as well. Let's take the example of a signature bank client whose name and industry I'm going to change a little bit. And we'll call him Ralph. Ralph is the son of immigrants. He didn't go to a fancy university. And he started a prosaic business, the organic dry cleaning business in Manhattan. And like so many entrepreneurs, he built the business up and he got it to a threshold where he had a choice. He could either expand product lines, expand geographically. In Ralph's case, he, could, he was offered the opportunity to take over some facilities in Westchester and to bring organic dry cleaning there. So Ralph did what entrepreneurs have always done, at least he, in his time, in the 80s, when he started out. He put together a business plan and st some numbers, and he started knocking at the door of some banks. First, he went to Chemical Bank. And Chemical Bank said, we don't think your numbers work. Then he went to Chase, and they said, come back to us in a couple of years. And then he went to Manufacturers Hanover, and they said, it's not our industry. Then he went to Union Bank, he went to Morgan Bank, he went to Westchester County Bank, he went to Anchor Bank, he went to Greater New York Savings Bank. And they said, no, 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 and no. And he went to 19 banks. And I've heard this story from so many entrepreneurs. He was about ready to give up. He was about ready to tell his family, it's not going to happen this time. We'll have to put it off. But again, like many entrepreneurs, he mustered up the energy to knock at the door of one last bank. And that bank said, we like your character. We get the numbers. Here are the terms of the loan we're willing to make to you. So he hired 50 people, signed the lease, brought his product to, brought his service to Westchester, and like so many entrepreneurs, created value for the economy. But I have heard the story from so many clients and entrepreneurs, and they all say the same thing. That was then. They couldn't have done it today. And why couldn't Ralph do it? Because every single bank name that I've mentioned has been bought by J.P. Morgan. <laughs> so let's take a look at banking in the 80s. There were tons of banks. There are 128 bank circles there, if you can see them, all mostly below $100 billion in size. And by 1991, they had merged into 50 banks. And then something strange happened. We got giddy on, in, in the dot-com boom, and we passed, we passed a law in 1999 repealing Glass-Steagall. More about that later. And then it became bank industry Pac-Man. Look at this. <laughs> it is like Pac-Man. Now we have today four banks in America from those 50, from those 128. 
Unbelievable. And that's bad news for Ralph because, and it's bad news for us as taxpayers. It's bad news for Ralph because big banks, well, big banks are good at some things. They really are good at some things. They're good at servicing banks. Uh, they're good at servicing companies, big companies such as those who are listed here at the New York Stock Exchange. And that's good. And they're good at, at least they do a credible job at mass market retail. But they're not so good at small and medium-sized business because that's not a scalable, lending to small and medium-sized business is not scalable. So Ralph has an issue. We as taxpayers have an issue too. When Ralph was applying to 19 banks, if one of those banks had systemically made bad banking decisions, it would go under. And you know what, that would be bad and we would be sad, but life as we know it would go on. If one of those four banks makes systemically bad decisions, let's not kid ourselves, we're bailing them out. We'd have to. It would be an unmitigated disaster for us not to do so. You know, we wouldn't trust our national defense to four military bases, but we trust our national economic security to four big banks. So ladies and gentlemen, let's fix it. Let's muster up that same courage that Ralph had and let's turn this around. We need banks. We need banks that lend to small businesses. If your name happens to be Larry and Sergi and you have a high tech company, well you can go to venture capital. But if your name is Ralph and you've got a prosaic business, you need banks. Small banks, banks that are approachable banks, banks that'll talk to you. So here's how we can do it. Three things that we need to do, and we need to do all three. One, if the banks are too big, let's break them up. Let's have the courage to break them up into $150 billion deposit banks. That's still pretty big, by the way. That's not small. That's as big as banks used to be. And by the way, I don't have a problem if banks grow to be bigger than that. That's great. They should compete away the business, offer better products, better services, better payment systems, put all charge cards on one card, come up with a way to do banking from a mobile phone. That's all great. Compete for your business. But we shouldn't allow banks to buy the bank across the street, shut it down, and move all the deposits into itself. Or willy-nilly just buy banks in the other parts of the country for the sake of getting bigger, for no other really well-defined reason than that. Okay, number two, Glass-Steagall. This was a really great law that we had for over 60 years and it worked pretty well. It kept the risky, speculative, casino-like operations of the financial markets, which are good, and I'm in, all in favor of speculation. It creates liquidity, but it kept it separate from safe, sound banks that could take your deposits so you could sleep at night and could make secured loans. What happened in 1999 when we were all sort of giddy from the dot-com boom is we said, to hell with it. Let's put them all together. Could be more fun. Well, I'd say most observers who are wondering, who looked at the 2008 financial crisis said that one of the, at least one of the primary causes was the repeal of Glass-Steagall. So I got an idea, not a real hard one. Let's bring back Glass-Steagall. Let's separate out. Let's keep safe and sound banks safe and sound so you can sleep at night. And then let folks speculate. All for it, great for the economy too. Number three, and this is less well understood, but still very important. And that is we need to give folks who deal with banks an incentive to worry about the credit worthiness of the banks, particularly wealthy individuals and big institutions. Now, if a big institution wants to put money in a too big to fail bank, they could say, well, we don't have to worry about our money. The bank's too big to fail. If they go to a small bank, and this is an example of how too big to fail banking infects so many parts of our economy. It's only one example. They could go to that bank and what they've come up with is this sort of scheme. They bring in their $2.5 million deposit and they say, you keep $250,000, which is the maximum that the FDIC 
allows for interest-bearing deposits to be insured. And go back into your back office and parcel out that $2.5 million into nine additional $250,000 CDs and go find nine of your friendly banks to parcel that out to. So what happens? Now, well, $2.5 million is insured, but the FDIC collects the same exact deposit premium as it did for $250,000, and, and, the, and the FDIC is insured the whole $2.5 million. Now, by the way, if this wasn't specifically legal, it would be a scam. So let's outlaw it. There are now over a half a trillion dollars of these deposits floating around. OK. So here's what we need to do. We need to do those three things. And then, if we do so, we can put our banking on a safe and sound foundation. We won't have to worry. We can junk tens of thousands of devilishly complex regulations that are, that are needed because we have a banking system on a floating, mushy foundation. If we have a safe and sound foundation, we'll be in much better shape going forward. And I want to leave you with just a couple other thoughts. One, why is it so important that we make loans to small and medium-sized business? Because small and medium-sized business accounts for more than 60% of all jobs in America. And according to SBA data, almost twice as many jobs, almost twice as many jobs from a, are, are created from a given level of growth in GDP by small and medium-sized business as by big business. So this is important for all of us who care about jobs, all of us who are taxpayers. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Contact your senators. Contact your congressmen. Contact their staffers. Or better yet, send them this clip and tell them you heard from a hip guy in a suit <laughs> that we need to return banking to the people for the people. Thank you.